Meyer here at Hometown Historian Channel. We are here uh, near Myersville, a uh, site here where they, this is where the Pottsville Maroons field was. They were an NFL team <coughs> back in the uh, 20s and they actually won the NFL championship and then they went out losing it due to nonsense. Uh, on this field, this Maroons field, on this field early history was made in the National Football League. The NFL Pottsville Maroons played the greatest NFL teams in the country from 1925 to 1928. On December 6, 1925, they played the Chicago Cardinals for the champ championship, winning 21-7. They lost the NFL title due to a territorial dispute by playing the Notre Dame Four Horsemen team in Shy Park. Philadelphia on December 12, 1925. So we're going to talk about the uh, historic marker and then we'll go a little more in depth about this really cool team that was a championship team that ultimately wasn't. Uh, here we are at the Pottsville Maroons Pennsylvania historic marker. Uh, the legendary team played as a member of the National Football League here uh, 1925 to 1928. And when they say here is actually that Minersville field that we stopped at earlier. Uh, it's now King's Plaza Shopping Center, but that's where the original field, and it was actually the Myersville High School football team field and only seated about five to 6,000 people, which was part of their problem and sort of what ran them into the problem that eventually we'll talk about here, cost them the championship. Uh, in 1925, the Maroons compiled a record widely viewed as the league's best. They climaxed their season by defeating Notre Dame in a well-publicized pro versus college match in Philadelphia, but then were denied the NFL championship in a controversial league decision. Despite strong regional support, their franchise moved to Boston in 1929. Okay, so the Pottsville Maroons, they were an American football team based in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, but played their Minersville at the Minersville Field. Uh, they were in the northeastern part of the state, uh, founded in 1920. They actually played in the National Football League from 1925 to 1928. Unfortunately, they wound up relocating to Boston in 1929 and became the Boston Bulldogs, but only played their one season. They were actually in three separate leagues. They were an independent league from 1920 to 1923 when they were known as the Pottsville 11s. Uh, and then they were in the Anthracite League, which was sort of a local group of teams uh, from 1924. And then they were in a National Football League from 1925 to 1929 funny story that they became the Pottsville Maroons, the story is they basically just went to a uniform maker and said give us whatever you want to and the uniforms were very, 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 very maroon. So they decided let's call ourselves the Pottsville Maroons. So they actually had 1925 was their best season, but they actually in 1928 they had a roster that included three future Pro Football Hall of Fame members. Johnny Blood McNally, Walt uh, Keisling, and the coach Wilbur Pete Henry. Uh, but they actually, that year, they posted the worst record in franchise history, which is one of the reasons then they moved to Boston. Uh, it's interesting, writer John O'Hara, who's from Pottsville, and they actually have a Pennsylvania historic marker for him, uh, he, he would go on to become a world famous novelist with uh, the appointment in Samara, Samaria. He covered this team for the local newspaper, the Pottsville Republican. Uh, like many other coal towns in that region, they had they fielded a football team. And Pottsville, what was interesting about them is most of their players were from the general region. and But they did go out and got players, like really, really good players, which is one of the reasons they were able to compete in, uh, in the NFL and do so well. Uh, is actually interesting. They had back then, they sort of had a regional area thing where you couldn't have another team in that area. So you wouldn't have like doubles like, like you have now. You have two teams in New York, New York Giants and uh, New York Jets. You couldn't have that. Uh, they had the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets in Philadelphia. And 
originally they weren't too happy about it, but then they decided, no, we really need to do this because it was about money making back then. So they figured most NFL team, well, most NFL teams, all NFL teams, they weren't allowed to play on Sunday. But Pottsville had no rules against playing on Sunday. So a lot of teams would play on Saturday against the Frankfurt, Frankfurt uh, Yellow Jackets, who would eventually become or be replaced by the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, and then they would go on Sunday and they would play Pottsville, which some people said that teams were tired out from the Saturday game. So that's why Pottsville had such a good record. But when Pottsville started to play some of these other teams, if that didn't happen, they beat the snot out of them. And like some good teams like the Chicago Bears and then the uh, Chicago Cardinals, who would eventually become the Arizona Cardinals. And then obviously then at the end, they had this sanctioned game that was against Notre Dame. and It was like the Notre Dame All-Stars. And Notre Dame was the premier football program back then and in the 20s. So for a pro team to beat those college all-stars was considered a tremendous feat and showed them to be as good as they actually were. So even a quote by one of the best players, uh, Red Grange, uh, he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and he was uh, with the New York Yankees of the NFL and the Chicago Bears in 1954. He made this statement, he said, the Pottsville Maroons were the most ferocious and most respected players I have ever faced. You know, I always believe the Maroons won the NFL championship in 1925. So what caused the controversy? So what happened was this Notre Dame game was originally sanctioned uh, for the Frankfurt uh, Yellow Jackets. And basically, the NFL's dominant Eastern team believed that they could get to play these uh, lucrative match against the It was it was money-making thing because... You know, everybody would come to see them. And uh, so when Frankfurt was no longer the most dominant team in the eastern half of the United States or the eastern half of where the NFL teams were, that right then went to uh, Pottsville. Now, the unfortunate thing is because the stadium I mentioned earlier, it was so small, they felt like it would not be the proper venue. So they wound out getting Scheib Park. Now, Two trains of thoughts happen here. The owner of Pottsville Maroons claimed that he got a uh, order from them that from the office when he called them that they said, you can go ahead and do it. But he couldn't recall who it was, which made it very suspicious whether he did or not. And they, the league warned them because Frank Frankford complained about there being uh, a dispute with their being in their territory with this game. And so therefore, because of that dispute, they were told you can't do this. Well, they went ahead and did it and the league went ahead and it was controversial that they, because there were some other stuff that went on as well. Later on the Chicago Cardinal Cardinals, they wound up playing, I believe it was a team from Milwaukee and I forget who the second team was. Now they beat both of them, but the Milwaukee team, to be able to actually have that game so they would have a better record, quote-unquote, than Pottsville, they actually paid four high schoolers to go and play for the Milwaukee team so the Milwaukee team had enough players to play. And that was also illegal. Now, they got sanctions against them, uh, the Chicago Cardinals, but they still retained the championship which was given to them instead of Pottsville. So it was a pretty rotten thing. And I guess two times it's been brought up that it should be reviewed again to say that Pottsville are the true champions in 1925, but both times it's been thrown down like by pretty much everybody uh, in the NFL team owners voting in that regard, which is a shame because they really, in a lot of ways, are probably the quote-unquote maybe greatest underdog uh, being such a, a much smaller town than these other ones to win an NFL championship. And they're also a forgotten team as well, the NFL championship. So it, it's cool that you have that type of history in this local area in Pottsville, Minersville, of an actual NFL team in 19, 1925 that should have been crowned champion, but in a lot of ways had that championship stolen away from. Like I get certain things 
but I would almost say their crime was less than what the Chicago Cardinals did by having players in there that shouldn't have been there. But unfortunately, the powers that be, people that are a little richer, got away with it and had things done in that way. And it's not uncommon for stuff like that to happen, unfortunately. But that's the story of the Pottsville Maroons. Uh, they were only around for nine years, uh, but quite quite the team, left quite the impression. <laughs> and then Red Grange in particular, I guess he had a game they were playing against when he was on the Chicago Bears, and they knocked him out once. And then he knocked him out a second time. And the second time he walked off the field and it's like, that's enough. I'm not doing this again. It isn't worth the, I forget what he got, like maybe $200 a game or something like that. And he's like, this isn't worth it. <coughs> so I'll forego my pay and not get my butt kicked again. So as always, I want to say thank you for coming along. Uh, this is just a cool story. I thought it'd be something that would be neat. I didn't actually physically stop at the Pennsylvania historic marker like I normally would have because the spot it's at is very hard to park, and I'm still not walking fantastically, so I don't want to have to walk a long distance and then try try to film there on spot. It's, it's a busy road as well, so the hearing issues. But this was a cool story. I was interested in, in, in the history. There's a lot more. Uh, I'll actually put up the links to the Wikipedia page, and you can read a little more in depth about it. Really good quite a cool team it's a cool part of history in Pottsville and something they should be very proud of they actually have shirts and all kinds of stuff like for the Pottsville Maroons it's pretty cool I might pick myself up one but uh thanks as always for coming along and uh as always we'll see you about town